Hi, everyone. This is oddly official. Um, thank you so much for all being here today uh, and taking time out of your day. That means a lot. Um, thanks to Chelsea. That was really beautiful. Um, my name is Emma, for anyone who doesn't know me. Um, I'm really big on doing introductions without seeing what I study or what I do on campus. So I'll just say a few things about myself to start off. Um, I'm the oldest of four girls at home, and my friends and roommate would describe me as sometimes bossy, always enthusiastic, and definitely having too much energy. My youngest sister at home was adopted from Ethiopia when I was 12, so since middle school I've always had a dream and a passion for exploring the world um, and learning about different cultures and people. It is my experience abroad that brings me to the theme I've been asked to speak about today. Um, you'll see that theme is Stuff Happens, Stories of Change, Transition, and Transformation. So thanks to the Truett Center for having me here. Thanks to Carrie for helping out. Um, this is like one of my favorite places on campus, so I'm glad you all are here. I will be telling a story involving sexual assault today, so I'd like to invite um, each of you to take whatever steps you need to take care of yourself. Myself nor anyone else will be offended if you need to step out at any point, and we will have a confidential advocate available afterwards um, if you need them. So um, this fall marks the start of my senior year, and I've had the opportunity to work with new, stu new student orientation um, and walk through the ins and outs of college life with new international students. I was reminded of how much new and all students soak up stories of their peers' experiences around them that ultimately shape the expectations they have for themselves from the start of their college experience. Tyson Glover, if he's here, a good friend of mine, <laughs> he says that college um, is a time when you hear all these stories of success, but not as many about failure. How come we never hear a speaker in Elana 101 talk about all the times they've tried something and just sucked at it? Or maybe they just hit a wall. Hearing stories of challenge or failure bring people together, and we develop empathy for each other when we understand the challenges and failures of our past. Thanks, Ty. Today, I want to let everyone here know that challenges will be inevitable during this time. College is all about accepting these moments and continuing on. So my story. If I could rewind time for you, I would go back to one year ago today. Last fall, during my junior year, I was roaming the streets of Dakar, Senegal, an enormous international city on the most western tip of the African continent. Upon arrival in Dakar for study abroad, naturally, I forgot every word of the national language, French, that I had learned after taking six years of classes. <laughs> I opened my mouth to ask my host mother where the bathroom was, and couldn't. I found myself mute for the next few weeks. <laughs> the transition was one of the rockiest that I've had, and everything seemed to go wrong during that time, from my asthma acting up in my dusty room to my malaria pills keeping me awake and sweating every night underneath my mosquito net until I heard the call to prayer at 5 a.m. Nonetheless, I distinctly wanted to make Takar my home. I aimed to impress my host brothers and parents by learning Wolof, the colloqu colloquially speaking ethnic group language. I kept a pocket journal with phrases, questions, and names of extended family members who would come to visit. When I had to ask my mom a question, even if it was something along the lines of, can you help me hang up my bug net so I don't suffocate during the night, I would write down the question in three different ways in my notebook and practice with the professor before I went home. Though my relationship with my host mother did grow, it was my relationships with male members of my family that began right away. It's difficult for me to explain gender roles in Senegal because I can only speak from my own experience and because gender is incomparable to anything within the U.S. But I will say women are expected to be more reserved in Senegalese culture. Therefore, it was my host, brother, my host brother and male host cousin, both my age, who became my closest friends. Our weekends were spent driving up and down sandy beaches, exploring forgotten islands, and drinking ridiculously sugary tea before dancing away at nightclubs until five in the morning. It was the wildest whirlwind I had ever experienced, and yet, at the same time, the scariest, too. There were times that I had never felt so alone. The other American students in the program quickly formed close friend groups and spent most of their time with one another instead of with Senegalese people. 
When I walked to school for class three times a week, my chest became so tight that I became prone to what I later realized were anxiety attacks. I found myself unable to breathe and crying in the school bathroom embarrassingly often. Outings with my host brother and cousin were the only thing that made me feel like I was making the most out of my time abroad. When my host cousin expressed an unusual amount of interest in me early on, I thought little of it. But as the semester went on, it became clear that he was truly interested in me. He was a role model to my younger brothers and led prayers for the family on Muslim holidays. He constantly told me how much he respected women and how often he studied the Quran. Three months into the semester, alone and needing something to distract me from my homesickness, I decided that I, too, might be interested in my cousin, and why not tell him how I felt? One night, I told him I felt like he was flirting with me, and I was flattered, but I wanted to get to know him better and spend some time together on an individual basis, thinking of something similar to a date. That night in his car, he touched me when I said to stop. I left his car confused, but happy for the attention, and when I woke up the next day, he showed up at my house unannounced. I suggested we get ice cream or take a walk, and he said no. He wanted to be alone with me. He continued to ask to go to my room and began to touch me in front of my eight-year-old host brother until I felt I had to say yes. In my room, he held me down on my bed, and all I could see was the ceiling. All I could think was I cannot be raped. I cannot be raped. I managed to push him off, and I stood up, gathering my clothes. He picked me up and shoved me back onto the edge of the bed, holding me pinned under his body. This time, I was terrified. I knew I needed to get him off. I told him repeatedly he had five seconds to leave me alone. Finally, he listened and realized I wasn't joking. He stood up, annoyed, and picked up his shirt and walked out of the room. He left me in the space that had previously been my only safe place in Dakar. I sat on my bed with my head spinning. Everything felt unfamiliar and strange, and all I could comprehend was that I felt dirty, and I told myself I had done something very, very bad. It was the hottest day of the summer in Senegal, and I left my room to try and hide in a public park, where neighborhood boys came and yelled cat calls at me in words I didn't understand. I had lost both of my friends, as my host brother was constantly with my host cousin, and all of my source of adventure in Senegal. A different night, three weeks before the end of the semester, I left the space of my home for the first time with my host father, and he told me inappropriate details about his love life and his interest in American women. At this point, I was exhausted. I called home, and my U.S. mother threatened to call my study abroad program and change my host family if I didn't tell someone what was going on. Humiliated and blaming myself for both occasions, I told the study abroad co coordinator on site in Senegal, who was indignant but unable to offer any real resources. It was the hardest time of my life, yet I vividly remember a sharp determination to make my experience a positive one. I became extremely close with my neighbors in those last few weeks. They were eight women who owned a hair salon and taught me how to braid hair, cook, sing, and dance. They also thought it was funny to exclusively speak to me in Wolof, so that skill of mine improved throughout those last few weeks. I can't describe my semester abroad in a single measurement, positive or negative, good or bad. It just was. The person I am today is all due to what happened, and the opportunity I had to be plunged into such a different world abroad is all thanks to Elon, as is the incredible support I have experienced upon return. It took me three months to tell an Elon faculty member through SafeLine what happened to me, and only then did I realize that it was a sexual assault. This began a slow process that involved Sparks, the GEC, and the Student Health and Wellness Center, leading to an opportunity I had to speak at an event called Take Back the Night last spring, which was an extremely validating and rewarding experience. I like to thank Jess Clark and Allegra, two faculty members who have been extremely supportive throughout this process. Also, a shout out to Hattie and Spencer Dean, who couldn't be here today. And Emmett, are you here? Hi, Emmett, you've been awesome too. I'm really grateful for the men and women in my life who continue to love and lift me up. Today I'm working with study abroad program I studied with in Senegal to improve training for faculty on site. 
and I'm working with the GEC to reimagine a more steady abroad reentry for Elon students. What I hope you can take from my story is that it's not a story about me or about study abroad. It's not a story about Senegal, West Africa, or Islam. It's a story about us and about sexual violence. And sexual violence happens just as easily abroad as it does to one in five women on our campus every day. It's up to you and me to continue this conversation, and as Gandhi said, to be the change that we wish to see in the world. Thank you all for being here today.